Hi there guys, it's Matthew here from the YouTube channel Uniform Collector and today we're going to be taking a look at the newest project which I've had underway for quite some time. It is a first Prussian foot guards infantry officers uniform and it's up to the rank of captain. So let's take a look and see all the components and I'll talk you through what we've got in store for you today. So let's take a look and see what we've got there. So moving up the first item you'll see here is the tunic. The tunic I've been doing a considerable amount of work on since I bought it. I believe it was originally from World War II sale, um, which was a bit of a dubious site, but I picked it up on eBay for a pretty decent price. As you can see here, it has the Pearly Merit medal, or the Blue Max, the Iron Cross second class ribbon, and an Iron Cross first class on the left breast, halfway between the fourth and fifth button, and parallel to the button of the shoulder board. Now looking at the shoulder boards, we can see here they are piped with red and hold two pips and they are junior officer shoulder boards so making two pips and junior officer shoulder boards would rank this up as a Hauptmann or captain. Moving over to the Klagenspiegel or Litzen, the collar tabs, you can see here these are the early pattern which would normally sit on your Dunkelblau uniform, your dark blue Prussian uniform but I have attached these to the field grey tricot uniform. Um, as you can see there, all of the buttons reveal the Imperial Crown. Now this does not have the Brandenburg cuffs, but instead has the Swedish cuffs with the two buttons uh, perpendicular to each other. Um, but I will be um, hopefully adding in cuff tabs to that as well. So, down from the, don't just ignore that Iron Cross second class. Down from the tunic we have the trousers. Now these are East German um, parade trousers with a white stripe going down there which will be replaced to red um, to match the Prussian guards. I do. These are the straight leg trousers I, although I do have a pair of the officers riding breeches um, however they are just a bit too short for my stupidly tall height. We also have here the leather gloves. Now these are World War One pattern leather gloves from Soldier of Fortune and um, they're the World War One British ones with the pop closure and, but they are sort of dark chocolate brown there, which is almost correct for the impression. Moving over to the boots, we have a set of officers' jack boots. Uh, these are Russian officers' jack boots, which I've had modified to widen the cuffs, and not the cuffs, <laughs> the calves, sorry. And I got these on eBay, and they, something because of the sheer size of my legs <laughs> in terms of length and also my foot. Um, size was size 12 or um, EU 47. It uh, makes it very, very difficult to get jack boots that will fit neatly, so I had to go for ones that weren't exactly pure correct. Now, moving towards the Luger holster there, and to mount the Luger, which I have yet to purchase, which sits on the belt. Now, also sitting on the belt will be your binoculars case, which is an original World War One British binoculars case, uh, which is almost identical to the German ones there. A lot of them were often sometimes private purchase binoculars, so there was a massive variance. A placeholder here of the Sam Brown belt, um, which will be replaced with a proper brocade belt bearing the Imperial German buckle. Um, that is simply just a placeholder until I get a new one there, but that mounts all of the equipment as such. Now we have the pickle hive here with the officer's chin scaling, uh, which is the metal chin strap in regards to the, um, the regular leather chin strap of the Manshaft and Iron List Man. Unfortunately, this pickle hive is a bit too short in the spike and will need lengthening, which I'm going to be ordering a replacement spike very soon. We also have the Schlimmmützen, or the officer's sort of peaked cap there, uh, with a leather chin, leather chin? Le leather visor. And um, this was from Soldier of Fortune as well. Um, we also have the sword, also from Soldier of Fortune, which is a World War One Prussian sabre. Unfortunately, this isn't the correct type of sabre that should be used with the Prussian Guard, and it should be a straight sabre rather than a curved one. As you can see there, the, the blade is slightly curved. So, with all that considered, let's take a look and we'll see what we can do once it's on. Hey there guys, so now we have the uniform on, we can see the more intricate parts of the uniform and how they each play to each other. So we'll go to the top down we have the pickle hive here which of course was one of the traditional spiked helmets worn by the German armies during the 19th and 20th century up until about 1916 before it was then replaced by the steel helmet or the Stahlhelm. So as previously mentioned here we have the, sorry about the squeaky floors, um, so here we have the officer's chin scaling which is very very ornate. Um, as I said the pickle hive should be taller in terms of the spike but that will be revised in due course. 
So moving on to the tunic, we have the collar tabs in red and gold, the shoulder boards, junior officer shoulder boards with two pips denoting the rank of captain. We have an eight button closure here with Swedish cuffs, which are the two buttons side to side rather than the three running up that you'll have seen more notably on things like Battlefield 1 and Verdun. Um, the binoculars case, which sits just to the left hand side and hangs off the belt of the shoulder strap, so that free floats entirely. On the right hand side, we have the Luger P08 holster for the officer's sidearm, and should push come to shove, we have an officer's saber as well, which hangs from a waist belt underneath the tunic and then from a set of leather straps here, which have been custom made by my friend Sunshine Jack on Instagram at Sunshine Jack. So, as you'll know that I've seen potentially my post on Instagram at uniform underscore collector, um, this has been a long running project for quite a while. So, I have there the Sam Brown belt, which as I said, it will be a placeholder, uh, which will eventually be replaced by a proper brocade belt. On the back, you have the traditional facings or finishings on the skirt of the tunic, which bears the red piping and also six imperial crest buttons. For service duty, you have the Schrimmutzen, you have the field cap there, which sits quite nicely on the head, and that was purchased from Soldier of Fortune. Right. As previously stated, on the sword itself, have a sword knot. The sword knot that I have, no, punch told my seal in there, the sword knot that I have is a incorrect one, it's not the quite Prussian guard one that I need to get, so that will be no doubt replaced in due time. Now in terms of the boots, you may just be able to see them. The Russian officer boots fit very well. Um, very, very tight around the calves to show sort of more of officer's private purchase cut. And for the trousers, you can see the white stripe running up the length of the trouser there. So overall, it's a fairly basic uniform dating from around about 1914. The Prussian Guard units were a more ornate sort of guard regiment and wore specific uniforms that differed from the rest of the German army which of course the German army was fairly consistent at that time due to the fact that it was split up into 13 almost nation states within the German Empire. So if you have any questions about the uniform as to where I got things, obviously run up from the bottom up. So boots, eBay, trousers, eBay, tunic, eBay, but originally from World War II sale, belt, um, ethnic militaria, holster, eBay. This charity shop find, original World War I, very, very peak find. Um, Iron Cross from Treasure Bunker, uh, Militaria in Glasgow. Iron Cross ribbon, eBay. Um, shoulder boards and pips um, from Epic Militaria, the cap from Soldier of Fortune, and the pickle head from eBay. Um, the sword and trottle were both from so well, the sword was from Soldier of Fortune, and the trottle from eBay. A lot of people often misunderstand how useful a avenue eBay can be to getting really, really good quality Militaria. A lot of times, when reenactors are getting out of the hobby, they will move on to sell a lot of their kit, and more often than not. They will sell it on eBay. So when in doubt, have a look. So, um, that is about it to round off the uniform there. Um, hope you all enjoyed the other Farby kit that is still underway. And hopefully I can post up more stuff in the future. This Uniform Collector, 